now that we got the bottom of the of the parts box designed and modeled up we now need to come and design these footers that go on the bottom of the actual part box these are plastic footers that lift the uh, box up off the floor or off the surface so that if something spills uh, it's very unlikely that any kind of fluid would get inside the box and cause the plywood to separate so let's go ahead and design that right now so first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to go ahead and name that file I'm going to call it 002-pb for parts box dash uh, plastic footer okay and I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that text copy that and hit save now it's gone ahead and created that file but I need to create a component of that file so I say new component highlight the new component here put that um, do a control V or you know paste that right down on top of that and hit OK and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this surface and I'm just going to draw, draw a rectangle and I'll go ahead and dimension that rectangle to be 12 inches excuse me 12.7 millimeters so I'll hit the D key for dimensioning grab this guy here and pull that off I'll key in 12.7 millimeters now I'm going to go ahead and dimension this part here but since it's square I'll just go ahead and click on that dimension D1 and it creates D1 hit enter and it automatically creates it to that size double click zoom the file up I'm going to move my dimensions back up a little bit and you see that FX um, that shows that I'm using this dimension here to drive that one okay that looks pretty good now we're going to go ahead and extrude this I'm going to hit the E key to extrude this and I'll select that and I'll key in four millimeters and then extrudes it to four millimeters I'll go ahead and look at that in 3d and you can see it here now I'm going to go ahead and draw on this surface here and I'm going to put a construction line instead of a center line I'll find the center of the box see the little rec seal of triangle pop up that shows me the center of that line I'll come down here but before I go all the way down and touch that I'm gonna come across here and go over to there and that gets it at 90 degrees and it's 6.35 millimeters so I'll accept that and I can go over here and touch this if I need to as well so when I've done that I can now come back here and draw a rectangle this time I use a center rectangle and I'll make sure I snap to that now notice it's all dotted line here well I can fix that real quick by going ahead and hitting escape selecting these lines I'll hold my shift key down I'll come over here and hold all that and I'll select that and now they're all solid lines which means I can extrude something from that so the next thing I'm going to do is extrude the tab well the tab that sits up inside the box needs to be three millimeters so I'll hit the E key to extrude and I'll hit three millimeters here key in that so I've extruded it up to there that looks good so now what I'm going to do is quickly save the file and I'm going to now that I've saved the file I'm going to come in here and do a fillet on this I'm going to select that surface and I'm going to create a chamfer I'm sorry I'll select chamfer and this is an equal distance well I'm going to go um, I'm going to go two distances and on this one I'm going to say um, I'll say one millimeter and I will say actually I will do it this way I'll take this one go one millimeter I'll go to that one I'll go two. Oh, I got it backwards I'll go one hit the tab key and I'll come over here and go two and that takes that up to that size there that looks pretty good in fact that's exactly what I want so let's go ahead and stop for right now and I'll come right back to this okay after looking at this a little closer I think I did something incorrectly and that is the actual shape and size of this uh, tab <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is come back here to the sketch go ahead and edit that sketch and I'm gonna go ahead and dimension that I found the dimension key come up ah 6.35 it's actually six millimeters 
So I did the six millimeters and let's double check our measurements. Measure this, measure that, and that says not 6.3 or six millimeters. So that's fine. Hit escape, go ahead, hit, hit the uh, dimension key again, and let's go ahead and make sure that's set to six. It is set to six. Go ahead and check that off. Good, and there it is. So we'll measure this again. Okay, double check that. Ah, six millimeters. Hit a, hit a uh, reset on the dimensions. Come back here. Six millimeters. That's great. Now what we'll do is we'll come over here and click on this. Click on that. Three millimeters. All right, that looks great. So I guess now that we got that done, we should probably go ahead and create our drawing. Well, that's what I would do. So I'll come down here and I will select, uh, let's see, new uh, drawing from design. And we'll go set it to ASME, which will give us third angle projection. Ah, B size drawing. Nope. We're going to go to an A size drawing. Make sure it's set to horizontal. Hit OK. So it'll go out and create us a new drawing sheet. And it should pop that part up. And it's set to two to one. In other words, it's two times the size of one. So I'll go ahead, I'll go with that. That'll be actually pretty cool. And we'll come up here to this. And we'll go to the top view. We'll come over here to the front view. Notice they look the same. How strange. So we'll put that there. Now, hit escape. And I'm going to move these around a little bit. Move that over here. Move that over here. I've noticed some of the drawings that students are doing. They're not really uh, laid out to the center of the actual sheet of paper. So... That's what I'm kind of doing right here. I'm kind of adjusting that so everything's kind of in the center. So we looks so the drawing actually reads better. Okay, with that done, notice how it's got this uh, wireframe here. So I'm going to double click it, go set it to wireframe with edges. So there it is. And I like that. Now let's go ahead and dimension this. So I'll hit the D key, which will give me dimension. Notice how it highlighted that. I'll roll up here and I'll just grab that line 12.7. Grab this 12.7. We'll come over here to this one and we'll go off to the side here of two millimeters. We'll come over here to this one and come off here to two millimeters. We'll go over here to this one here. Go off there to three. We'll come over here to this one and this one. So that's a total of seven millimeters. So it looks pretty good. Well, we got to get the angle in. So let's get that in as well. So I'll select, uh, come up here to dimensions. I'll come down to here to angular dimensions. I'll select this guy and this guy. And I'll rotate that over here so it's 63.43 degrees. Looks pretty good. So scroll out here. Oh, let's save this file. Do a save real quick. We'll say it automatically goes, looks back at the original design, gives us that name. That's great. We'll hit save. Okay, after I you know, made this drawing, I got to looking at it and I missed the dimension. Uh, can anybody guess what it is? I'm sure you can. I forgot to dimension the tab right here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I got the dimension command selected here. I'll come over here and see if I can snap on one of these. Okay, there it is. I'll pull this, uh, let's do this again. Slap here, come off, ah, that's much better. I'll just do this one right here as well. So that way I have both dimensions and both angles so it's all covered. Much, much better. All right, did I missed those. And you know, that's why you want to get people to look at your drawings. You know, yeah, you may be a great designer and everything, but you're gonna forget things, you're gonna miss things. And it's so important to have other eyes look at your drawings. So apparently, Jim Lovell didn't see what he should have said. That's a joke, he would have seen it. <clears throat> but after I looked at it, I knew I had to go back and fix it. So notice up here where you've got this right there, updated. So you click on that, double click on that. So the whole part and everything gets updated. That's a good thing. We'll save our file and hit save, hit OK. And then we'll go back out and create the new um, PDF file for that. So we'll go ahead and hit export, PDF. Make sure we select this, hit open. And it'll probably go back and open up another PDF file, hopefully over the one we already created. And so it's opening that up and we'll kill collapse that. Yeah, that looks better, a lot better. So we'll go ahead and hit okay on that and I'll kill that window. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna close that. Got this guy open, save him. 
and let's go ahead and create a new file for our assembly. Now, in Fusion, you can just design parts inside of one actual file, and you can just put part after part or component after component. You can do that. I don't like to do it that way. Reason is, I like my computer to perform much at, high, at a higher rate, and and if you start doing all those same files into one file, it gets kind of gets kind of overloaded. And so I'm going to say PB uh, assembly ASM. Okay, make it capital ASM. All right. So we've got this new assembly file. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this parts file over in here. So this is the floor we initially designed. Looks pretty good. I can. This is probably your first example of where I actually do a, uh, do a uh, an assembly where I combine multiple parts. We're going to go ahead and accept that for now. I'm going to roll this up like that and look underneath the bottom, and I'm going to go get that new plastic footer that we designed. Now you can see it pops in up over here, which is fine, uh, and I can move that around, and I can move it over here, and I can spin the model around using the the wheel right here. And I can do all that, and I can kind of try to position this up here close to that. A well, lot takes forever. I'm not going to do that. And it's not real precise. I'm just going to hit OK. And I'm going to do a thing called a, a joint. I'll click on the joint. And what's cool about Fusion is that you just really need one uh, edge or one you know, feature to uh, check off of to join two parts together. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one edge. And notice the orientation of the little target here. It's kind of uh, somewhat vertical, but on that edge. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. But I need to figure out which edge I want to touch. Well, obviously, if I'm on the bottom side on that one area right there, what would make the most sense is the bottom or inside of that guy right there. Now, pay careful attention as to the orientation of the target. I want to make sure that that's vertical with the green going up. Click on that. Voila. Looky there. So it's gone ahead and put that part right there on that one surface. That's what we want. Now, it'll always show you these little joints right here where you actually join it. So if you ever need to come back and edit that, you can rotate this around. You can put your mouse. Well, you can't get it because it's kind of hidden. But that's okay. You still come down on the timeline. And you can say edit joint from there. So if you want to do that, you can play around with that if you needed to. Well, looks good for now, but let's go ahead and join. Let's put more parts in there to <coughs> and start building our assembly. So I'll drag another part from my uh, library over here. And I'm going to just scroll it out of the way so it doesn't get in the way. And I'm going to go at a different angle than I did on the last one. I'm going to come from this side. So I'll go ahead and hit the joint uh, button, command, click on this. Rotate this down. I'll grab that right there, and it should take that guy right up there. Don't be alarmed when you see it like the other one kind of, you know, the board moves, the wood moves, and the other one looks like it's popped off. Don't be alarmed by that. I think it's kind of a quirk in Fusion. It's actually still made it. It just moved an image of the part over. That works. Grab the, uh, I have my uh, library opened up on another screen, so I'm just dragging parts across. I'll put him right there. I will scroll him up here. I will push this guy down. I'll rotate this around like you see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit the join command again. Grab that one edge there. Rotate down. Come right in here. Grab that. And voila, it put that in there. Looks good. Okay. One more to go for our assembly. So we'll scroll this down. Scroll this over and let me push that down a little bit because I'm getting kind of complicated in here. I'm going to rotate up and I'm going to go and join, put a join in based on that. Rotate this down. It's kind of cool when you when you go across the, the image and you grab one join edge to another join edge and to see everything just kind of move in place. There again, see it did it. I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened to my stuff? It all moved. Don't worry, it's all good. Just hit OK. Yeah, I know, it kind of freaked me out the first time I saw it. So don't worry about it. Now, one thing that can be annoying, like seeing the constraints, is seeing joints. If you want to turn those joints off, come up here to this little TV screen here, or monitor screen, 
come up to object visibility and you'll see joints down at the bottom you can turn those off sometimes you want to keep them on so you know where you join but in this case we'll turn them off we'll double click which kind of centers this up and we are starting to build a portfolio box assembly this is really cool i hope you guys are enjoying this all right